After about nine hours of deliberation, a jury came back with a resounding verdict guilty on all three charges. We want to get reaction from our local leaders here in South Carolina to the verdict and joining us now is former South Carolina lawmaker and a man who has spent decades practicing law. I.S. Levy Johnson, thank you for being with us. And first, just tell me your reaction to this verdict. Are you surprised? Is this what you thought the jury was going to return? Well, I must confess, um, it's sort of a combination of reactions. I was somewhat surprised, but on the other hand, uh, I was not surprised because the prosecution put on a very compelling case. Uh, this case proves the value of a video. That camera made a difference. The, the jury and everyone in the world saw what happened, and if they saw what happened, their eyes couldn't lie to them. They had to come to the inescapable conclusion that he was guilty of murder. Uh, you know, some of the things I will never forget in watching that video you're talking about is George Floyd saying, I don't want to die, and then calling for his mom. Um, do you think that that moved a jury and, and then listening, going forward, listening to everything that the defense just tried to throw at the wall, saying it was a heart issue, it was uh, carbon monoxide, um, it was drugs, um, you know, just sort of trying to find anything that stuck. Clearly, the jury came back and said, no, it didn't. Well, I think the prosecutor, and I, I can't recall it verbatim, when he said uh, that the defense tried to portray um, Mr. Floyd with a big heart, but it proved that Chauvin had a small heart. And I think that was a pro profound argument that he was making uh, to the jury. And, and everybody can relate. Um, mother's love is very powerful. And to hear him, hear him calling for uh, his mother had to have an impact on the jury. Going forward, this is a case that we know the entire world has been watching, all eyes in South Carolina here watching as well. How does this verdict change the precedent moving forward, not only with police officers, but even with citizens doing their duty to each other on the streets? I think that this case has made us alert to what has been happening for years. The next step is going to take a genuine commitment on the part of everyone to make a transformational change. There is so much systemic racism in America. And unless there is a transformation in the hearts and in the brains of people, there will not be any material changes. Change must take place. Now, moving forward, um, we know that the sentencing is going to take place. The judge said in about eight weeks, we've got second degree murder, third degree murder, second degree manslaughter. What sort of a sentence? I know each one carried a different number of years, 40 being the max for second degree murder. What sort of sentence do you expect to see for Derek Chauvin? He is facing a maximum of 75 years and the 40 years on, on the second degree murder. The judge has a choice of sentencing him to consecutive years, adding up to, uh, to 75, or he can sentence him to 40 years and run the other two concurrently. I anticipate that the judge will give him the maximum on the 40 years. Um, what about the fact, I, I know most of us were watching, as he was led away in handcuffs, I think many people watching didn't realize he wasn't actually in jail during this trial. He was out on bond, but bond was revoked. What were your emotions as you were watching Derek Chauvin be let out of the courtroom in handcuffs? It is very, very unusual when a person is charged with murder that they receive a bond. And that just points up what we've been acknowledging so much that there is a double standard when it comes to police officers who are charged with a crime and a citizen. And that disparity must be eliminated. All right, I.S. Levy Johnson, we appreciate all you've done for our state and <laughs> for us giving your time today. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Thank you.